Hey, good people. It's your girl, Frederica McClary Easley, back with another episode of ba, 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 ba. The People Are Blunt. Real quick, as you already see, I have a guest with me. I'm going to let her introduce herself. But before I do so, you know I have to do a shameless plug. The People's Cannabis, The People Are Blunt, and New Line, Smoke This, all on our wellness and our merch line at thepeoplesecosystem.com. So if you have not been over there lately, do that. Why haven't you? Check it out. Again, like I said, we have a new line um, called Smoke This um, that is um, named after our SKUs that have dropped uh, in terms of pre-rolls, hash pre-rolls, hash infused, uh, big, small buds, all of that good stuff. So hop on over and check us out. And without further ado, I am joined today by Dr. Bridget Williams. How are you? Great. Thank you for having me, Frederica. We've been waiting to do this for a while, so I'm excited. I am super excited. Um, I remember when I met you at NCIA's Midwest meeting in Detroit. Yep. Yep, and absolutely. we spoke then and immediately hit it off. And I was like, oh, you have to come on the podcast. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's it's good to, you know, it's even though we're all in cannabis, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're all like minded in cannabis. So when you're able to connect, I think it's important to, uh, you know, continue that and make it happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so happy. Um, you have been moving and shaking. It has been <laughs> so much going on. I follow you on um, on LinkedIn. Like I said, as soon as we connected, I went and did what I needed to do to stay abreast on what's going on with you. Um, and when at the end of last year, yes, Courage and Cannabis came out. Yes. yes. I immediately hit you up and I was like, I need a copy. Yeah. Yeah. And that we had to, we had to bring you on. So, um, The first question, <laughs> because um, I have so many, and <laughs> when I read this, it was um, first of all beautiful, but an emotional roller coaster. Mm -hmm. um, so my first question is why? Why? So um, you know, courage and cannabis was really born out of the fact that I I love stories. Um, I think it's what motivates me as a physician. I'm a family doctor and understanding people's stories and where they came from is what really would always propel me and encourage me and keep me engaged. And so when I got into the cannabis space, you know, the first time that first year when I was giving cards to grown men that were like crying as I'm handing them the card and I'm like, you know, what is this about? And learning the shame and the guilt um, that people had the relief that they didn't have to hide anymore. Women who wanted to be more involved with their church, but felt ashamed that they were using cannabis and now said, Hey, I have a card, you know, I don't have to hide from my kids anymore. That it was such, such a liberating experience and to learn what their experiences were and how they were using it medicinally. I started writing down these stories. I had someone that was interested in publishing it and I couldn't, take that next step because I felt like they weren't my stories. So I kind of put it on the back burner, um, learned about the anthology opportunity where everybody writes their own chapter. And that was important to me, not only because I wanted people to share their, their stories themselves, but I wanted them to financially benefit from the stories themselves. And so, um, so Courage and Cannabis is the, the stories of people where cannabis has changed their life and shows the power of what cannabis and CBD can really do. Um, and, you know, like I said, the authors have the ability to sell the book themselves and, and benefit from it. So a couple of things real quick um, to unpack. When you are talking about handing out cards, you are talking yeah. about medical cards. Right, right. So I am a family physician for nearly 20 years, um, spent most of my time at the Cleveland Clinic. And I had a patient years ago that in started talking to me about cannabis. I thought she was nuts. I was like, this is illegal. What are we talking about? But I saw and worked with her yeah. and how it transformed her life and, you know, her blood sugar. She was a diabetic and such an amazing, amazing experience at that time. That was about 15 years ago or so. 
So when um, it became legal in Ohio, I knew I wanted to participate and be a part of this. And I got a job with a card mill, as they say. And they're like, we don't care what you know. We just, you know, we just push cards. Cards for cash is what they said. So I knew that wasn't me. So I got certified as a cannabis educator as well as a life coach and then opened my own offices. Yes. And so this is um, groundbreaking. First of all, let's say this because it, you know, the stigma has died down a little bit, like each, you know, each year. And really, um, Mm -hmm. I would say during the pandemic, right, Mm -hmm. we've thought we've seen this huge shift because cannabis dispensaries, um, the employees were were made essential. Mm -hmm. So in the last couple of years, really, we're, we're seeing a shift. We're seeing people more publicly um, honest about their consumption mm-hmm. and their feelings around this. But when you first dug into this uh, 15 years ago, you know, almost two decades ago, it was a totally different ball game. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I had a lot of respect for the patient that brought it up. But yeah. this was, keep in mind, this was also during a time where there was a lot of homeopathic type um healing and medicinal, you know, holistic options that were kind of coming to the forefront. Yeah. So nearly every day I had someone that was asking me about some holistic option and I believed in my patients and them knowing their own, bo- their own bodies, but they were seeking the medical information to back it up. Yeah. So I was always looking up information and sharing, you know, yeah, cinnamon can help your blood sugars, but you got to take a lot of cinnamon, Right or, you know, just different holistic practices and just putting it into perspective. So when this patient asked me about cannabis, I thought the same thing. Yeah, there'll there'll probably be something, but nothing that will really add up to anything. And when I looked into it and saw the research that was going on really around the world and that we were not utilizing it in the U.S., that I was completely unaware of it, you know, going um, into medicine, I knew I needed to find out more. And she was very, you know, a respectable and uh, very knowledgeable person. And so she was making edibles and smoking. And I was learning about titration and timing and dosing. And and I saw how it changed her. But I want to give you your flowers, though. Uh, All of that sounds great. All of that is good. But I want to give you your flowers, though, because um, you did not have to do that. And in medicine, um, especially as people of color, we know that our pain that our ailments things of that nature are not always believed we know that you know we always or usually have to go the extra mile and so for you as a physician as a practicing physician to actually have that kind of respect and acknowledgement for your patients and belief in your patients knowing their body i want to highlight that uh, Mm -hmm. because there are a lot of physicians even to this day uh even with all that is coming out that still have not taken that step to mm-hmm. educate themselves on the cannabinoid system, on titration, on all of these things, and how this can benefit their patients or benefit you know those who they're seeing, even in regulated um, regulated states. Mm-hmm. So I want to definitely make sure that I point this out that this was not something that you know the medical board mandates that you learn and that you take up. This was you deciding I want to support my patients. Yeah, absolutely. And I I think at the end of the day, the experience my own experiences as a patient, the experiences of my mother or my grandparents or what have you, I could never leave that behind. And I knew the being turned away and turned down or or noses being turned up, you know. Um what really motivated me in medicine is my father had colon cancer. And we'd be in the hospital. I grew up a lot in the hospital, you know, with him as a patient. And the whole team comes in, right? All the white coats come in. And there's my brother and myself and my mom sitting there. And they wouldn't even acknowledge the fact that we exist. And in reality, they weren't even really talking to my father. They were talking at him. They were talking amongst each other. And I think that never left me because every time they did it, they'd walk out and I look at my mom. I'm like, I could do that so much better. Like, how do you not acknowledge these kids? How do you not acknowledge, you know, my mom? How do you not see them? Right. Yeah, this whole person and that support system that's there that actually is going to help it. You know, the support system actually helps you Mm -hmm. do your job, right? Because this is someone to hold accountable. This is often the people who are going to be taking care of your patient 
depending on the degree of, you know, what's going on with them. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So it never really left me. And to be honest, I was a psych major in college and I was really at the fork of the road. I could go, honestly, the easy path, which something I was very passionate about psychology, or I could take what I understood about psychology and bring it to medicine. And right. that was, that was my goal from day one. I, I was stirring up, stirring the pot <laughs> before I ever Good got trouble. started. So Good trouble. Good trouble. <laughs> Good trouble. Thank you. Good trouble. Well, well, the world is better. The world is better for you making that decision because, um, you know, our healthcare system absolutely needs it. So, okay, let's get into this real quick. Yes. So courage and cannabis. Yes. Um, amazing. So we start out with a forward from Kevin Green mm -hmm. of um, of the Cleveland Cannabis School. Mm -hmm. um, amazing. You know, that story going full circle mm -hmm. um, in terms of his upbringing and where he started and then where he is now. Yes. Right. That testimony. But you also include your story. Yeah. People don't usually know that because when I talk about the book, I don't often, I, I think most people assume that I didn't write a story in the book, you know, um, but I felt that my perspective needed to be shared as well. Yeah. Yeah. And first of all, all of the stories, all of the, the subject, um, so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so I want to just kind of talk to you real quick about, I know that people authored their stories, but you know, as, as this anthology is being pulled together and you're reading them, um, and as you're telling your story, mm -hmm. what was your kind of mental health check, your process on, um, on replenishing yourself? Because mm -hmm. I, uh, when I was reading this, I, I, I read one, I had to kind of put it down, you know, I mm -hmm. had to allow myself to digest what was, what was shared. You know, these really intimate details that are shared. I had to digest it. And then, you know, I would kind of pace the floor a little bit and then, you know, go back to another story. But I took some time with this. This was not a a passive read. This was not a just like sit down and just ingest all. Mm -hmm. So what was your process? Um, you said you shared why you told your story, but what was your process and your healing that was attached to it? Absolutely. So. I so I've done one anthology where I participated in a book with other authors and what I realized and, and our, our mentor that helped us in that is that writing your story is not just about getting published. Getting that story written down is a process of healing. And so I realized, you know, as I interviewed everyone that was going to be in the book and I was hearing their stories, I realized that we had this really great diverse group of people coming together. And I think I, I spent most of my time focusing on their process, right? That because some of these people could write their story easily and, you know, great. And they moved, you know, can move on to the next and other people, this was a really serious healing moment for them to be able to share what they've been hiding, um, to share, like to try to inspire other people in the process. And so it was a lot of work of really counseling mm -hmm. and guiding. And um, like you said, checking on myself in the process as well. What I love about Courage and Cannabis, because this is a series, this is the first book, but we'll okay. be looking for new authors um, in the fall. So you can go to courageandcannabis.com and you can submit information um, if you want to be a new author. Um, in the next series, but um, what I really wanted to provide was the opportunity for healing for people, not just to publish a story, but really um, liberate them um, and to be able to inspire and educate others in the process. So um, yeah, it's, it's, we actually get it done very quickly, believe it or not. I started looking for authors in July. We started writing in September. We were published by December. So it, but it is a, it, it's an intense process, at least on this end of it. And you're absolutely right. All angles were covered because, you know, you had a mother, you know, trying to heal her child. Mm -hmm. You had a daughter, you know, dealing with her mom, you know, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. had um, a mate, you know, a spouse, you mm -hmm. know, trying to be there, trying to 
um, be supportive. And these stories of, oh my God, some of them of just people being ignored or people being told um, to just wait and see, mm -hmm. you know, people being told even after healing was proven, right? Even after, mm -hmm. you know, the person, um, you know, people were getting better, but still being told, well, I, I can't support you in this, you know? It was just mind blowing to me. It was mind blowing to me, right? Because that's what medicine is about. It's about healing, it's about helping people feel better. And so to turn away was just, just yeah. I don't know. It was yeah. just a lot. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm glad that the authors have each other as well, right? Because during the process, I know everybody's story, <laughs> right? But they don't know each other's. They start getting tidbits as the writing goes on, okay. but they really don't know each other's stories until, first of all, we start doing the interviews that we start, uh, you know, a couple months before the book launches. And then when they finally get to read each other's stories, it is so much, you know, it just affirms you so much in your own experience. Yeah. And, and the nice thing about the book is that every author has a way that you can contact them. Yes. And so if that story speaks to you, if their experience speaks to you, that you can reach out to that person and, you know, get more information. And I love that, um, that you also like that kind of bio page where mm -hmm. you told more about the person. So, you know, sometimes uh, we get into these cycles of like trauma porn. This is definitely not that. This is right. very, you know, as you said, they had the ownership of how their story was told. But mm -hmm. you allowed for more of that person to be seen, that mm -hmm. they were not just this incident or not just this um, this trauma, right? Mm -hmm. But they yeah. were more than that. They're this full person. Yeah, absolutely. And what I found fascinating, you know, you have these 18 authors that come together incredibly successful group of people, the most humble people I've ever met in my life, where they just, they were along for the ride. They knew that they, you know, their, their objective was really just to share and inspire others. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and yes, without the bio page, you don't necessarily know what, what came of that story, you know, yeah. what was the next step for them? So it does kind of, um, close the gap for you. Yeah. So yeah. as you were deciding, you know, you had um, a ton to work with, you know, through through your practice. Mm -hmm. What made you pick these 18? Mm -hmm. You know, was it like first come, first serve kind of thing? Was it like, were these, were some of their stories, were you intimately involved? Uh, and so, you know, kind of wanting to push those out first? Mm hmm so there was a little bit of all of that. Um, we definitely kind of just opened the gates because this was new, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I knew what this would mean. I knew that this was a book that could really make a difference for other people. I couldn't even sleep. And so I had to get kind of get it out there. So some of it was a little bit of first come, first serve. Other ones, I was involved in their healthcare story. And so I, I knew what they went through personally um, as me being their physician and, and myself um, and, and there being the patient, um, other people were referred to me. Um, we had one guy in the book that had a great story. And as we just got to the point of writing, he was like, I know someone with such a better story and they need to be in this book. And so, um, he set everything up so that she could be, um, an author in the book. So, um, it, it's been, it, you know, God intervenes. And I don't think I could have selected such an incredible group of people that, you know, when you see something that good come together, you know, that it comes from someplace else. So, yeah, yeah, that uh, it was divine intervention yeah. and that all is as it should be and as it needed to be. Um, and as the cover states, you know, an anthology of inspiring stories written by heroes. These mm -hmm. people truly are heroes. Mm -hmm. They truly are. Um, and, and definitely inspirations. And so, you know, as we're on this journey of normalizing um, something that used to be normal, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, politics be politicking. Um, but as we're on this journey, yeah. you know, I, I, I want people to pick this up. Courage and Cannabis, y'all. I want y'all to pick this up. I want you to digest it. I want you um, to use this as a, as a 
the source of strength to tell your own story, right? Because that is how we get out of, that's how we continue to get out of this um, state of prohibition that we are still in, right? Mm -hmm. um, is by people from, from all walks of life, you know, sharing their stories so that everyone sees that like, hey, you know, I already know people who yeah. consume, who use this, uh, who use this plant. And, and I already know, and I love these people. And right. like, so they're your neighbors, they're, yeah. they're your CEO. They yeah. are, they're everyday people. And so yeah. changing the stigma was a big part of what drives me in the cannabis space, right? Oh, of course, yeah. patient care and people getting better, but seeing that patient, that, that people were being treated and seen in such a negative light over something so simple. Yeah. that that really disturbed me. So the stigma changing has been a big motivator in everything that I've done yeah. um, to really change this. But we utilize the book simply for that, yeah. that it's not meant to make, tell people that they should use cannabis. It is really there to high, to shine a light on why people use it and what difference it's made. And so it may be for you, or it may just be so that you can understand your nephew or your son or your daughter just a little bit better so that you don't judge them for the use uh, for their use. And that's a big part of it for me. You know, I think people forget that when we talk about cannabis prohibition, we talk about those who have been just as impacted. But I don't think we really take a minute to uh, really consider all of the relationships and dynamics that are impacted or have been impacted over decades of this. You know, parents maybe not having as close a relationship with their children mm -hmm. or vice versa, mm -hmm. you know, because of this. So I just wanted to plug that um, with you bringing it up. Absolutely, there's there's a ton of healing. There's community healing, there's familial healing, um, and then there's healing of our mind and our body and our spirit. Um, and the plant is wrapped up in all of that. Yes. So let's talk about your transition. Yes. Because about 15 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, you came, uh, the plant basically introduced itself to you, right? Like, <laughs> yes. I don't know if it was that you chose cannabis or cannabis chose you, mm -hmm. uh, but but y'all connected. Yes. And so what was the, I mean, outside of your patient, as you shared, um, you wanting to educate yourself and better support them mm -hmm. uh, on their journey. But what really kind of said to you, like, Bridget, girl. Come on over here. Like you need to dig into this full time. What was that for you? So I think it, it's a couple of different layers that I was fascinated by the experience that I had with the one patient. Right. And it really made me look at why wouldn't my medical education not provide this information for me? Right. I mean, I learned about a lot of things. Some of them we utilize, some of them we don't. But why wouldn't this information be presented to me at all? So that was a little disturbing, especially when I could see what it could do. Right. Um, I think a big driver for it for me, though, was that my patients were very frustrated that here we were in a system and here we are 15 minute visits. And honestly, by the time the nurse goes in and takes the vitals, I probably have seven minutes at best with a patient. And during that period of time, it's diagnosis. Here's a pill. You don't like the pill. Here's another pill. You got side effects. I'll add one more. And there's a revolving door. Yeah. So I was very frustrated way too early in my career because I felt like we could do better. My patients were also upset. And so it was that period of time that I really out of frustration and anger, I was like, let's get you off of medications. I had a patient that was mad. He was on 35 years old on five blood pressure medications. And I was like, well, let's do something different because I was like, this is ridiculous. So I started putting patients on my lunch hour and at the end of the day that I knew needed more time. And okay. I started the process of learning who they were, how they got there. Why do they have the diagnosis? What shift, What? where was the pivot in their life that put them down a path where they got to this point? Right. And once we, I understood who they were then and, and what wellness meant to them, yeah. then I started working on diet and exercise and pulling people off medications. I, one of those patients was the, the woman that asked me about cannabis. So I was already in the space where I was like, we can do better. And what I learned was that cannabis not only provides a, a health option, a medicinal option away from pharmaceuticals, but it also provides an empowerment. 
that you could not get from pharmaceuticals. You know, pharmaceuticals are a little scary. There's a thousand different side effects and warnings with them. And basically you got to take them the way that I prescribe. Otherwise, who knows what's going to happen, right? And there's a fear and patients were pulling away even more now than then. But patients were pulling away from that attitude, that lack of options. You know, it's either what I prescribe or nothing at all. Right. What I saw happen with cannabis is that it empowers patients, that the risks are very low, but the healing can be incredibly high, right? And so they had the, if you understood your endocannabinoid system, if you understood what CBD and THC does in your body, you might change what you take on a daily basis based on what you're feeling, right? right? That empowers people when they can control their own healing. That empowers people. And so that was the the extra step taken that made me realize that I wanted to approach this in a, I wanted to approach medicine in a different way. And that was the first step. You know, and that's so important because I feel like to your point, you know, you take this, but, and we all see the commercials, you take this for, you know, you take this for your high blood pressure, but like the next thing you know, you're bleeding from your rectum. And it's like, wait a minute, like, Maybe I'll just stick with my high blood pressure. Maybe I'll just stick with that. (laughs) Maybe I'll just be okay there. (laughs) But everything is like band-aid approach, right? Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not actually getting to the source, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 also I think that this is a part where your psychology background came in Mm -hmm. because when we're talking about, especially for women and people of color, and we're talking about macro microaggressions, we're talking Mm -hmm. about, you know, anxiety, we're talking about just living. Yes. in this skin yes. or with our gender in this patriarchy. Um, stress is really the silent killer. Yes. Yeah. I, I always say that I don't think you honestly can be black in America and not have some form of PTSD. And that is not to minimize people with severe symptoms by any means. But I think being black in America, how can you not have be fearful, be edgy, be on, on hyper awareness to be pulled down by what society tells you you are when you know that's not who you are. And to be living under that scrutiny and that judgment on a daily basis that you can see the faces drop when you walk into the room or when you go into a store. And I don't care what you've done. I don't care how successful you are. You, you and I get followed just like everybody else. You see what I'm saying? And how can that not have an effect on your mentality? And I don't think that is is emphasized enough that we all have some form of PTSD. You know, I'll tell you um, recently, and I'm sure you probably did as well. So I'm watching the the questioning of our sister, Mm -hmm. uh, Supreme Justice Mm -hmm. Brown, and the poise. And the control that and the strength that she had to have for that whole process has had to have, right? In order to get to where she is, Mm -hmm. has had to have. Um, It was exhausting. It was, I was pissed off Mm -hmm. at a lot of the line of questioning and the assumptions uh, and the the narratives that were being told. Um, But it was draining for me just to watch her through it all. Mm-hmm. Um, the line of questioning, just you know, just to see her go through that and have to maintain. Um, and this is something that women, but I'm going to say, as a black woman, you as a black woman, um, I know that we have experience, regardless to our social economic background, regardless to how we grew up. Mm-hmm. Uh, because people don't know that we don't have a, a, a banner on our forehead. We don't have a tag that says like, Hey, I'm from a middle-class family. Right, right. Hey, you know, I took honors classes. Hey, right. I graduated summa cum laude. Like we don't have banners right. that meet you before you see us. Mm-hmm. What you see is our skin. What you see is how we present ourselves. And regardless to how clean cut, how politically correct that may be, um, there's a game that we have to play for survival. Mm-hmm. And so um, 
it was exhausting for me to just watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's exhausting. And how can it not bring up some of that pain? Right. Because not only do we have these experiences, but we're taught to, like you said, keep it together and keep it cool and take it and then get up the next day and do it all over again. Right. And so how can that not play, just pay a toll on you, on your emotions? It's just like you said, it's fatiguing. And then to watch someone else have to go through that and you can't reach out to her, you know, you can't hold her. You can't say it's okay. You can't cuss anybody out because you're watching it on TV, right? But we all feel that. Yeah. And to be able to do anything that empowers us, even in the smallest way, takes us several steps forward. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that this is why we all um, celebrate as well, because we all understand, right? There's a there's a em empathy there. Um, in a in a shared experience to a certain degree of the weathering, mm -hmm. you know, that we go through um, on a daily basis, you know, mm -hmm. just to make it. So, um, again, giving you your flowers. That's why I applaud you sacrificing, you know, your lunch and those things to really take time to to get to know and learn and understand the full person, the full mm -hmm. patient. And not just this band-aid, oh, what's this? Oh, what's that? Okay, here mm -hmm. you go. Here's some, here's some narcotics. Okay, right. bye. You know. Right. Um, okay, so we know we have another courage in cannabis. Let me plug this real quick again. Um, please visit courageandcannabis.com if you're interested in the next series and just to learn more about um the amazing work that is being done, putting these stories forward. So now let's dig into what else you got going on? Um, because I've been seeing you all over the place. You're speaking, yeah. you're getting your flowers, right? Like you're getting acknowledged, you're getting awards, uh, which is just beautiful. You know, we mm -hmm. love that. We love not having to wait um, yeah. and in the moment, the acknowledgement. But, but what else do you have going on? Gosh, so um, yeah, well, since COVID kind of let up, right? Uh, I don't know if, you know, we're over COVID or, you know, we're COVID light. At this yes, point. absolutely. So um, I I did start doing speaking engagements um, part of last year, going into this year, really for the opportunity to humanize and make it cannabis more relatable, CBD more relatable. Um, I have my own line of CBD products called Green Harvest Health, which are on the more medicinal side. Um, I realized early on that I my patients couldn't necessarily try if I said go and buy CBD. I did not feel comfortable always with what they were getting. And um, I knew there were fakes out there with no CBD in it. And there were fake lab reports. And I was like, I need to have a better understanding of what they're getting so that I can be confident. Yes. And I need my patients to be confident, right? Because we were really all embarking on something very new, you know? And, and what did CBD really mean? And what does it do? And we're not regulated. So we have to take that extra step. And then I've been um, a participant um, in formulating a line called Embody. Embody, okay. Love it all day. Um, yeah. So uh, it is a it's a lifestyle brand of CBD. Okay. And so um, it's not the CBD you need; it's the CBD you want. Um, and so it is. Uh, bath a uh, cbd uh, luxury bath powder 500 milligrams um 400 milligram body butter of that i'm obsessed with um it is rose petal organic cones for to you know stuff with whatever makes you happy right yes. and yeah. then um the intimacy massage oil which Ooh. i formulated and really worked on with this group for about a year um, and so we finally launched last month. We presented in Detroit um, at Lucky Leaf, sold out nearly of everything. And it's just, it's really about self-discovery and growth and not hiding and not being afraid or shameful, whatever you, however you want to express your sexuality or your confidence or whoever you are, where, you know, it's, it's a line of products to express that. And so, um, so it's at myembodylife.com. And um, 
you know, we just finished an amazing photo shoot this weekend. And so uh, it's definitely a little bit edgier, but it's a lot more fun. And, you know, CBD is always medicinal, no matter what you do. So. Absolutely. I was going to say that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah. So I'm so I love this. Well, let me just put the ticker up. So myembodylife.com CBD mm -hmm. that you want. I love that. I yes. love that line. Yeah. Um, so this is really speaking to me for a number of reasons. Um, and I can't wait to um to go over and check it out. Mm -hmm. But it speaks to me for a number of reasons because I'm a fairly new mom. So I have a 19 month old son. Oh, congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but that's a whole journey. You know, first of all, being a new mom, um, new body, right? New mm -hmm. you, new self. So in terms of that discovery, but women in general, one of the things that's always so, and I'm sure you've come across this, but there are grown A women mm -hmm. um, who um, have been in relationships, may even be married, and who have never had orgasms or who do not engage in these kind of self-care um, I would say wellness practices, just in terms of your feminine energy, just in terms yes. of who you are, right? Yeah. Getting in touch with yourself. Um, that is a huge thing. It is a huge thing. And I think over the years, I think I hit a wall where I'm tired of people not really talking about it. You know, they yeah. say self-care and go and get a massage and buy yourself something to wear. And no, I'm talking about, do you know your body? And right. do you enjoy it? And do you feel confident in it? And it's not about size or or anything. You can be every big, small, and everything in between and love your skin and love your body. Yeah. And how do we express that and celebrate that? Yeah. And, you know, I saw myself in Embody. And, you know, like you said, having the kids, new body, new experiences. And it is so easy to lose yourself in the process because we become the caretaker and we become the nurturer and the idea of loving yourself, exploring your own body is like taboo. You should, you should know your body better than you let anyone coming into it with will. Right. And how can they really be a part of your experience if you don't know yourself first? Yes. So the products are meant for self-discovery. The yeah. products are meant for joint discovery and um, and we we really brought in really amazing people that could relate to that to be a part of the photo shoot. And um, you know, I can't wait for you to see it. Like you'll you'll learn a lot from our um, our ambassador has been creating videos on Instagram. So if you go to My Embody Life on Instagram, you get probably a little bit more of a sneak peek than you might see on the website itself. Um, and we have a confession site. Oh. So, because I want people, now you can't be telling everybody everything, uh -huh. but you can anonymously. And like I said, it's about the story for me again, right? You can anonymously share your story and liberate yourself. Right. I'm all about the power of the story. So, um, so definitely share, share, you know, anonymously your, uh, your stories there. And that can be liberating as well. And take a look at the products and the rose cones are mind blowing. Like they burn so slowly. And so you just feel pretty just using them. So, I mean, you know, that, that for me is like mom has the evening at home by herself, or maybe I got a hotel room or something and I can actually soak because yes. you mentioned a soak as well. So I can actually soak and use the rose cone and that, and, and I have some music playing like that to yes. me is a whole vibe. So Frederica, I don't want to get you in trouble, but let me tell you what I used to do for several years for Mother's Day, because Mother's Day is coming up. It is. And I really started to think, doggone it, I'm doing the same stuff mm -hmm. that I do every other day. If anything, I'm doing more on Mother's Day because you got to get the kids ready. You're going, you got your mom, you got somebody else, all of this yep. going on. Yep. So um, for a couple of years, I would check into either a hotel or a hotel spa mm -hmm. and I would go like Saturday, all day Saturday, spend the night there. And then on Sunday, come home. And then I was ready to deal with you all. Yeah. Um, but I was like, why, why is mother's day really just like every other day, but with heels on. Right. 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 And first of all, 
in terms of heels with this pandemic. Now, I used to be a four inch all day conferences and everything stumping right. around. But after this pandemic, after these two years, and especially because I was pregnant during the pandemic, yeah. I am just like cute and comfort. Like, listen, yeah. y'all, y'all gonna get all these cute sneakers, all these right. cute casual um, shoes because uh, mama's arches are not feeling it anymore. Right. And I am not going to be out here hurting for yeah. nobody. Yes, I hear you. And we shouldn't, right? Like they always say beauty hurts. We, I, I don't know if that's the way we should be approaching life, right? That um, beauty should be whatever feels good to you. That's right. Period, that's right? right? So, um, yeah. So I, I celebrate you with you being a new mom and Mother's Day and find that time yeah. for you. Um, because I'll, one thing I've realized over time, and I and I don't know if I really express that, I'm a life coach as well, right? So I okay. work with part that our offices are the only medical cannabis and life coaching offices definitely in ohio because i that's what happened 15 years ago i spent right. the time yeah. and so i got trained as a certified life coach and so with my clients i i hope to god that I, they learn as much from me as i learn from them but because i always walk away more inspired and, and really ready to challenge myself as well yeah but it's so important to not lose yourself in the process right and to continue to discover and find self-expression and be connected yeah. to this right yeah. to this yeah. um and it's so easy to fall fall away from that because that's not what's encouraged you know <clears throat> Something you said earlier, you know, we were talking about um, this self uh, exploration and also partner, you know, exploration. Mm -hmm. um, but just thinking of, you know, growing up, how sexuality and sensuality mm -hmm. is at least how it was discussed with me. Like, I remember, like, none of those things were brought up. It was, you know, don't be fast, you know, uh, you know, keep your cookie box cover. You know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. it was those kind of things. It was not, and it was always um, in a tone of how you're bringing someone else pleasure, right? Like how you're pleasuring your mate and mm -hmm. not putting you in the driver's seat in terms of, well, how are you being pleasured and how important it is for you to know yourself so mm -hmm. that you can then, um, you know, help someone, guide someone, to where you need them to be and Absolutely. also treat them also show them how to treat you right like how, how we treat ourselves um is like the first indication to others in terms of what we will be ready or willing to receive right absolutely and i think the one thing that's really missing in this is like so what you just said some people would not have gotten what you said at all right because they're just not connected and one thing that I've realized over time, and even in um, developing this line, we worked with sex therapists and we wanted those conversations that there is something, there is physical intimacy, but there's emotional intimacy that makes physical intimacy that much better, right? And it is, I think what we learn is that, and definitely what you're saying, sex is bad, like I, just all the way bad, right? And that if you participate in it, you're a bad person too. Simple. And if you don't want the basic, right? Like if you don't, if you don't want to just basically lay there and have something done to you, if you want to be an active vocal participant in your mm -hmm. sexual experience, well, now you are fast, right? Or right, right. you know, we got the hotels. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Or, right. You know, you're loose. Yeah. All of those things were attached to all of that. So, so can keep in mind that a lot of what we're talking about here is getting rid of the sigmas and being free and being liberated, whether it's cannabis, yeah. whether it's your own sexuality and sensuality, yeah. whether it's understanding, like get away from the sick because society, I always say just because they make it doesn't mean you need to buy it just because right. they teach these, these really narrowing thoughts doesn't mean you have to sign up for them. Yeah. Okay. Create the reality that is meaningful to you, that speaks to you. Understanding and loving your body is, there's nothing bad about that. There's nothing bad about um, sex. There's nothing bad about self-exploration and self-discovery and really figuring out what speaks to me. If you let all of the taboos go, what would you be interested in, 
right? And that's really the question because we allow the taboos and being the labels of, of like you said, whether you're being fast or ho or, you know, if you let all of that go, what would you, what, what is meaningful to you? And that's really what embodies about embodying who you truly are yeah. and creating products that help you in that discovery. So, you know, and, and, and what's exciting to me about this is the role that cannabis CBD can play in it. Mm -hmm. Um, because what we know is that, you know, um, cannabis CBD, all of those things help you to relax, mm -hmm. right? It is bringing your body to, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, doc, but homeostasis, Absolutely. right? So it is this point of you being kind of like your best self, like you mm -hmm. being calm and relaxed. And so how just being in that place, mm -hmm. Um, definitely emphasizes and makes all experiences and situations better. I mean, just imagine eating and you're shoveling food in your mouth versus eating when you're able to relax and actually enjoy the meal and actually Absolutely. use all of your senses, like you're seeing it, you're smelling it, you're tasting it. So right. this is what excites me about this, about this pairing here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, the intimacy massage oil was made especially for that. It is all natural oils, organic, that are blended with terpenes that are stimulating without having a burning type. It's yeah. all natural. Yeah. Um, it's called citrus vanilla. It's edible. It's meant for massage. It's meant for intimacy. We say it's great for pain, but uh, great for pain, but better for pleasure. Hey. And, so, you're like <laughs> and so I have, um, there are people that uh, use it. Obviously they have lubrication issues and pain issues. And like you said, cannabis can be so helpful for people that are, have issues with pain and, and discomfort to help them relax enough and decrease pain to be able to reach orgasm. Because as long as you have that barrier, you really can't get there. Right. 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 Um, but it's written, it's meant for people that just, it just adds another layer of fun to something that should really be enjoyable and there should be no shame in finding um, intimacy, emotional and physical intimacy enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. And especially yeah. for those couples who have passed the itch out there, who've passed their seven or their 10 year or their whatever, and you're looking to, uh, again, have an opportunity to connect, yeah. you know, because that mental part is so important. And so this is something for you to explore together. This is something for you to discuss. Yeah. Um, this is something for, because we change. So what you may have liked, you know, sexually when you met your partner at 25, 20, whatever age you were, mm -hmm. um, and depending on where you are now, those things may be different as well. Totally different. And if you're not having open, comfortable, mm -hmm. loving, laughing, wonderful conversations with your partner about this, about sex about what you enjoy and what you don't want. If you cannot have, y'all need to do some work. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. the shame that we live with, particularly as women yeah. around this and that we just have to take what we can get and, and we should not ask for anything more that we're, we're pushing that aside. Yes. And yeah. there's so much joy in being able to have successful emotional. And I keep emphasizing that because you can have sex and it not be about anything intimate. Absolutely. I'm talking about emotional and physical intimacy. If you can bring those together, then you, you skipping down the street a little bit happier. You have a little bit more energy to share with others. Listen, you can, they know the difference. A little bit more, right? Look, we all know the difference when one of our colleagues, you know, comes on a call or, you know, we used to go in the office and you see people coming in with little peps today stuff. It's like, okay, all right. <laughs> you, know, you know, we we right. all know that, we all know that. Okay, look, shameless plug here. Yeah. Um, because of what we're talking about. I don't know if this is a part of the embody line, mm -hmm. but I think it would be amazing to have some kind of like talking prompts or some kind of, you know, cards that have questions or have um, like I said, talking prompts yes. that really dig into that intimacy um because again because sometimes you may not even know where to start 
Absolutely. So yeah, we're just at the beginning of this. Like we've created the products, we've created the um the confession site. Yes. Go and share your secrets. And the thing is, I it's not just about you getting it out and healing. You're gonna inspire somebody because you're gonna be like, oh, I didn't even know, right? Yes. And how else do you really find that out? Right. Yeah. And so share your story because you might be inspiring somebody else that you're like, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. The stories involve our products and they also are just experiences that people have had. Um, so of course we prefer if you, it involves our products, right? Absolutely. But, yeah. Um, but yes, we're just at the beginning of this. And I do think that um, we wanted something tangible, Yes. right? Um, that people can kind of connect with, that can help them connect. And like I said, we work with, you know, sex therapists in the process, and we're just at the beginning of this. So, well, I am super excited for all of this. Um, I think you know the other encouraging thing is as people anonymously share, but it's finding your tribe because sometimes mm -hmm. you feel like you're all alone in your likes or your interests, right? Or those desires. Mm -hmm. And so to possibly see like, oh wait, hey, mm -hmm. you know, this is not as left field as I thought it was. Absolutely. Not saying that that matters because whatever you want, it is okay. It does not matter. Love yourself, yeah. love your experiences. And I think that might be even a little bit more of a generational thing because definitely for my generation, the word is mom. We don't talk, none of that right and i know you have experienced some of that as well but what i'm seeing is that they're like a not even that like a little bit younger there's a little bit more of an open conversation there right yeah, and yeah. and i'm hoping that you pick that up you know when you start seeing you know a lot of the information we're going to be putting out soon but the, the some of the shame that i feel my generation dealt with doesn't it's not exactly the same for this current generation no yeah no, and so, so if we can make that melt away no matter what your generation is um you know i i often think about a story that my mom shared where she had a friend of hers who he did it all right he got became an, an attorney he got married had 2.5 kids you know um his mother worked two or three jobs scrubbing floors to get him to that point. And he bought the mom a house and sent her on vacation and did everything, you know, he did it all right. And then um, when his mother passed away, soon after he went in his closet, he put on his pink high heel, thigh high boots. Yes, indeed. And he walked out the door yes, because indeed. he had no room to be him. And where he was. And my mom told me that story. And I, she told it to me many times. It never left me, never mm -hmm. left me because I said, I don't want to be somebody, whatever it is, whether it's your career, whether it's wh whatever it is that's inside that's trapped. Yeah. No one, ever, our lives are worth more than having to be trapped no matter what it is and whether it's, and I think all of this really comes to light because, you know, meeting people, you know, in the cannabis space that have been hiding fearfully. Right. And rightfully so, because we were targeted. Right. So like rightfully so. Yeah. Right. And the most dangerous thing about cannabis is being caught with it. And to see people see they're feeling liberated just even with our medical program in ohio i think that just put me into the space of we our lives are short enjoy it right and experience it and don't be the guy who comes out with the pink boots who had to hide all those years and everyone's everyone's pink boots are going to be different right, right. For some people um it's their education and they decide to change careers at the last minute for other people, it's their, you know, vocation, like meaning like even their hobbies and things that they're interested in doing. It might be feeling caught in family situations that are stifling and toxic. Whatever it is that you need to step out on and start living your life, that's what we want people to discover. And Absolutely. we want you to discover joy, just joy. Yeah, we all deserve that. Yeah. Well, Doc, on that note, that's how we gonna end this. That's how we are ending this. 
Um, joy, you know, mm-hmm. and I would say joy for women, mm-hmm. joy for Black, Latinx, Indigenous people. Yes. Um, that is resistance. Mm-hmm. You know, our joy is also a form of resisting, mm-hmm. you know. Yes. Um, okay, so that was the perfect note to wrap it up on. Yes. I have nothing else to say. A couple yes. of things that we want to plug. So first of all, if and you should, right? So this is not just an if, but to get in contact with Dr. Bridget, um, to find all, find out about all the amazing things that she's doing and where she may be speaking and where she may be showing her beautiful face. Holla at her on LinkedIn, check her out on LinkedIn. Uh, courage and cannabis, good people. Yes, yes, yes. And our Audible will be coming out any day now. So follow us on Facebook as well, Instagram, Courage and Cannabis. Um, the if, if you don't have time to read, because you know folks don't know how to read, um, <laughs> then um, the Audible will be out any day now, and we'll be announcing yes. that. Yeah. Oh, question about the Audible. Okay, so um, are you doing the narration? Uh, how is that going? So, um, I, this whole audible thing is fascinating, but, um, there's voice talent. If you want to side gig people and you got a voice, there is amazing opportunities for people out there. And I found this amazing woman who with each character, she shifted her voice and shifted okay, her perfect. accent. She okay. was amazing. Just, I mean, to be honest, I was like, oh, it's a man. And then she would do the next voice. I'm like, oh my God, no, it's not. She's amazing. I will, I'll do, um, once, once the audible is, uh, up and live, we'll, we're going to do a big zoom Facebook live where the voice talent gets to talk to the authors because she's obviously, and she knows them as well as I do now. Right. She's read every word. And so, um, but I, I think it's such an amazing opportunity to, put a voice to someone else's work yeah, yeah. and I want them to meet. I want the voice talent and the writers to meet. So I think that that's, that's special. And I love mm-hmm. that you were very intentional um, with who you picked for this because, yeah. so I like audible books um, because you know what, if I'm, if I'm walking the baby, um, you know, well now he's running around. So when he was in the stroller, but if you know mm-hmm. that, or if we have time in the car and sometimes I just, you know, don't want to have music on, I can put a book on, I can put something on and I can listen to it and I digest it. And I like that it also um, adds to um, the vocabulary that he is exposed to, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we listen to books, sometimes we listen to podcasts, things of that nature. Um, And so my deciding if I am going to listen to a book or not is based on a narrator. And some Mm -hmm. of them I just can't get with, especially Mm -hmm. if it's like, an author of color, or I know that these stories are about people of color and you have someone come on who is just kind of sounding bland to me. Mm -hmm. I can't get with it. So I'm so happy that you were intentional um, with that. But yes, so stay tuned everybody for the audible um, that is going to be released that option as well as if you are interested in being a part of the next series, um, go to courageandcannabis.com. Yes. And then last but not least, we have to plug myembodylife.com. Yes. You need that you want. Needs and wants can be the same thing, people. I need it yes. and I want it. And that's yes. okay because I'm grown. And as yes. Ms. Tabitha says, that's my business. That's right. That's right. And so yes. also check them out on, on Instagram or IG. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you feel compelled to, you can anonymously um, share your story. Do it. Yes. Share it. Inspire. Love it. You know. All that. You learn new experiences that might, you know, be a highlight of your life as well. So. And find your tribe, y'all. Find you can your find tribe. your tribe. Yeah. So, um, Dr. Williams, thank you so much Absolutely. for coming this. and spending time uh, on the people are blunt. Uh, good people, like, subscribe. We are on all the things now. So we are on. Uh, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Prime Music, YouTube, all of those good things. And so if you like what you hear, like what you see, we need you to do that. And so um, to the next time, stay blunted. Dr. Mm-hmm. Brickley, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. I appreciate for coming you. And spending time with us. And um, we out, y'all. <laughs>